Hey guys, this is George. I'm going to go over George's Excel checkbook register. And this is a Microsoft Excel template that helps you keep track of your financial transactions in simple to use registers. So there's two main sections in this software. There's the account summary, which is what I'm in right now. And there's also the registers. And this right here is an example of a checkbook register. So I'm going to go back to the account summary. And this is your list of accounts. And to add an account, you click one of the buttons right over here. And then you're going to give the account a name. I'm just going to enter a sample savings account. And then you're going to choose the account type. It's either going to be an asset account, which is something that you own, like a checking or savings account, or a liability account, which is something that you owe, like a credit card account. So let's choose asset and then choose OK. And then to go to the account, you just click the arrow next to the account name. And then here is where you just start entering the transactions for that account, starting from the top and just working your way down. So let's go back to the account summary. So I've already entered a few sample accounts in the account summary. And the first one is a checking account. But below that, you can also have credit card accounts. We just added a savings account. So there's different financial accounts that you can track here. So along with the account name, you're going to have the register balance, and then you're going to have a few items related to reconciliation, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So let's go into that first account, the checking account here. I've already added some sample transactions. So to enter a new transaction, you just click on the button for new transaction, and then you start entering the information directly into the cells. So for the date, you can just enter the date either by typing it directly in this cell, or you can save time by using this insert date. And I'm going to go ahead and use that and choose the date of February 1st. The description for this particular item is going to be paycheck. And we got paid again, and the amount is $3,200. Let's enter one more item. Let's choose the same date. And let's say that we went to Walmart and we spent $100 there. Okay, so it's really easy to enter the transactions. You only need the date field, the description field, and the amount field. Now you can also enter a check number if there is one. There's also a memo field. And let's also talk about these two fields here, which are optional, but I think they're both important to use. Before we get into that, I want to talk about these indicator lights here, the green and the red. Basically, a green button means that the item is a positive number, and the red button means that the item is a negative number. Yellow up here is, means the amount is zero. So for a checking account, your inflows you enter as positive amounts. So for example, these deposits here or inflows, and the outflows from the checking account are entered as negative amounts, which are these items here with the red icon and this item here. So the category field is optional, but there is a benefit to using it. So let's go ahead and enter um, our sample categories for each of these transactions. Now normally you would just enter them as you enter the transaction. So for this first item, that's going to be salary. This is going to be groceries. This one's going to be restaurants. This is mortgage. This is groceries again. Restaurants. Paycheck. Salary. And Walmart's groceries again. What you're going to be able to do is when you do assign a category to these is you're going to be able to get subtotals for the different items. So let's say that we wanted to see how much we spent on groceries within this particular register. You can click these drop down arrows, they're called filter arrows, and they're in each of the column headings. So let's click it down and look for groceries. You could select it here or you can type it in if there's a lot of items and search for it and there's groceries, click OK. So we can see that in this register we spent, there were three transactions and they totaled $400 that 
that we spent on groceries, which is the last row in blue there. So when you apply a filter, it displays the rows that match the criteria that you chose, and it hides the other rows. Now you can further filter this by another column. So we have groceries in the category field. Maybe we just want to show groceries spent at Walmart, or maybe just groceries spent at Trader Joe's, or maybe we want groceries for a certain time period. Let's say that we just want groceries in the month of January. So in, for the category groceries in the month of January, we spent $300. So that is the benefit of assigning a category to the transactions. Now to remove these filters here, you go to the filter arrow and you click on clear filter. And you would have to do that for each of these columns. And there's a simpler way to do it. If you just go up here to this button up here that says clear all filters and click that, it's going to remove all the filters and display all of the rows in the register. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about in the registers is reconciliation. And there's some great tools inside of this register that will help you with reconciliation. The first one is the rec column and this cleared column, and they're both related, and also this summary data up here. Okay, so let's take a look at the summary data in the top right. It says total outstanding items is eight. So an item is outstanding if it hasn't been marked as reconciled. And the way you mark an item as reconciled is you just click in this rec field and you put an R next to it. And then a green check mark will appear in the cleared field. If it hasn't been reconciled, it will be a exclamation point. So eight items, which is eight transactions right here, are still outstanding. The register balance is 5,000, which is this running balance right here, the last item at the bottom is 5,000. And then the total cleared is zero because none of you haven't reconciled this yet. So when you start your reconciliation, you're going to match your items against your bank statement or online banking, however you choose to do it. And you're going to match them. And if they're reconciled and cleared, and I use those terms the same meaning in this program. I'm going to click here, and you notice that that turns to a check mark, meaning cleared. And up here, remember it was eight items, now it's seven. And these totals are adjusting too. Total cleared is 3,200, which is that one item right there. Okay, so it's really easy to visually see what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and, as I was doing my reconciliation, all of these items have been cleared. And let's say that just the last item has not cleared the bank yet. So that's the only one that doesn't have the green check mark. So if I look up top here in the top right, that shows that one item right there. It lets you know how many items, which is just this one item right here, and the amounts match, negative 100, negative 100. It's still outstanding. Okay, and your register balance is still the same. Total cleared is now 5,100, which is all these items here, which have been marked clear. Now, if you just want to see your outstanding items, let's say that you have hundreds and hundreds of items, instead of just scrolling here and looking for all the yellow exclamation points, you could just click right here, Show Outstanding. And that's going to list just your outstanding items and subtotal them, which is the last row in blue there. So you can see you have one item that's outstanding, which matches up with what I've what we showed earlier on the top right. One item for negative 100 matches that. Okay, so to clear that, you're just going to click here, Clear All Filters. Now if you go back to the account summary, we could take a look at that account, checking account. There's that register balance for 5,000. Remember I told you here to the right are some reconciliation information? Well, the total cleared is 5,100. Outstanding is that one item for negative 100. And it tells you how many items are outstanding, just that one item. If you click here, it's going to do the same thing as if you click right here, Show Outstanding Items. 
So let's say that we go back the next day and then we do our reconciliation again. Let's say we're doing it online and this item cleared. So we mark it with an R. That turns to a green check mark. And we look up here, there's zero items outstanding and for a total dollar amount of zero. Our register balance now equals a total clear because all items have been cleared. So it makes reconciliation a lot easier to do and to visually see with these different indicators that you have here. So let's go back to the account summary. One other thing I wanted to show you here along with the register balance is if you scroll down to the bottom here, it sums up from the different accounts the total assets and your total liabilities. In this case, the net amount is 4000 so that's a basic overview of George's Excel checkbook register.